Hey everybody, you're listening to Raw with Marty Gallagher, J.P. Bryce, and Jim Steele on ICTV. Today we're discussing real world dieting. No hype, no fluff, just real info and strategies that when combined with the right training program can produce great results for everybody. I've done some, uh, some research and according to the latest studies, approximately 34% of adults and 15 to 20 percent of children in the U.S. are now obese. So obesity is an epidemic. I know a guy that works for a large kidney dialysis company and he says that uh, they can't build these places quick enough to keep up with the epidemic. So guys, first to get us started on this this topic, why is this happening? Why is everybody gaining so much weight what is everybody doing wrong these days that they they used to not do multi-faceted that that answer i I, you know you got the the all the stuff that's in our food that didn't used to be if if that article marty wrote about reg park and who was it marty oh marvin marvin Marvin, Marvin, yeah and you know it was it was a, a great article about them spending the day lifting and eating but the one thing that stuck out with me is they go to a diner after they work out. Now, this is when, Marty, in the 60s? Late 55. 60s. Okay. 1955. All right. So pro- but probably up until like 75, that it was the way this yeah. was. When you go to a diner or a restaurant, everything was local. Mm-hmm. And, so orga- every- and organic. And organic. And yeah, it's just, it, all it means is it just came from the farm down the street. You know, it came from local. There wasn't all this, you're buying stuff, you know, out of season that has to be preserved or you're, you know, you're eating from a plastic, uh, you know, container like they, ha- you know, have all these ready-made foods and all that shit. Everything was natural. Nobody even knew it. So, we, and we didn't have any obese people. Plus, you know, you know, all the chem, you know, with with that goes all the chemicals in the food and and you know the theory that you don't know when you're when you're full because of all these chemicals and so they're eating more. And how many kids are sedentary now versus when we were kids? You know, I was telling the story the other day to a friend of mine. My, you know, we had a hundred acres at least of woods behind us when I grew up. I spent the whole day down in the woods, running right. around, fishing, swimming, right. catching fit, you know, doing or catching snakes, all this shit, running up and down the hill, right. playing tag and all this. Yeah, we were naturally skinny because of that. We That's were right. So active. So um, there was no video games. There was no, you know, if I came home and turned the TV on because Aquaman was on, my mom said, what are you doing in the house? And I'd be like, well, Aquaman, I didn't even say it. I would just walk right out the house until she rang the dinner bell and I got my ass home. That's right. And, you know, besides that, there was there was nothing to do in the house. I mean, and TV, I mean, what, we had five channels? Five. Three. 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 (laughs) Well, we got the we got channel thirteen out of Baltimore sometimes, and forty five. <laughs> if you adjusted the black and white just right, you could see forty five and thirteen in Baltimore. Well, for the first time in the history of civilization, the the, the greatest health problem facing us is obesity, not starvation. You know, it used to be in the ancient times that you know the people starved to death, and you know they would be found lying on the side of the road and you go, oh, that's terrible that these people are starving to death, but, you know, you didn't have any extra food. No one did. Yeah. Now, the, the biggest problem for the poor is obesity. But it's because of the the cheap um, uh, empty calories, right? The, yeah. the, the refined carbs, the fast food. I mean, if I'm a poor person, those dollar specials, those 99 cent specials yep. look mighty damn good to me, man. Yeah, I they mean, do. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. telling you, I can get hash browns. I can get, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can get this, I can get that. And my money goes a long way. And, I, and that food tastes good. You know why? Because that food has, it has a kick to it. It's, mm. it's sensory overload. It assaults yeah. the taste buds. It's like, remember in the old days when they used to throw msg and chinese food yep yep and that would just push through everything yeah these kids taste buds are so deadened now because of all these refined processed industrial foods that they eat that the only thing that cuts through is something truly rude Mm. right in terms of taste and flavor so uh but of course you know those 
those foods are of colors that aren't seen in nature like cheetos yeah and and they're so and they're so ref, they're so refined There's a cheeto tree over there I love yeah. cheetos but but I they're do. so they're so preserved and they're so refined. Have you seen, yes. I think it's McDonald's or something. Yes, they are. There was an experiment that a guy did. He took a Big Mac and put it in his office and just left it up on the shelf for like a year. He took a picture of it when he got it and set it there. He took a picture of it a year later. It looked the same. And what are you laughing at? What Mark is that doing to your insides? Mark Chalet used to say, hey, so you know the wonderful thing about a Twinkie is he said you can take it, put it on a fence post, go away for a month, come back, and you can still eat that Twinkie. That's it, man. It lasts forever. <laughs> yeah. It lasts forever. That's what that's what our troops should have for meal replacements. <laughs> well, at the time, we thought that, that was like uh, space food. Oh, I know. Yeah, because like, it lasts for, oh, my God, that's great, right? Like, oh, what remember, about this? Remember uh, Tang? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, well, that's what the astronauts do. That's for astronauts. <laughs> and what, Jim what Steele. What about this? When, when I know, Marty, even more <laughs> dramatic. It makes, you know, at this point, it's even more dramatic when you were a kid. But McDonald's only had hamburgers, fries, shakes, and Cokes. That's, that's all, all they had. Yeah. Yeah. And we went to McDonald's like twice a year. We'd go after we won a big football game. Right. And it then was a treat. Uh, when my mom, my sister had piano lessons. So my mom mom and I would always get McDonald's that day because it was on University Boulevard. We'd just go right there. So that's when I would get McDonald's. Now... Oh, uh, I, uh, wait, I, now, wait, now, wait. And it was so delicious. Yeah, it was very good. And it was, and you appreciate it. I mean, I, mean I remember, the, I mean, the thing that, that um, the first McDonald's in my neighborhood was in Glenmont. We could walk to it. And my buddies uh, were, they were the first employees and actually, one of those guys, a guy named Brian Loomis, he actually stayed in within the corporate McDonald's, and he worked his way up to, I think, a corporate vice president, right? You know, and he started out uh, slipping me extra burgers when I'd come up there after football practice, right? Oh, here's your order of, here's your burger and fries. It'd be like 11. <laughs> so that's yeah. why you're so well-preserved. I had that, too, with friends, yeah. 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 No, but my my friends work there. That's that's what they Jim, did. That was like their first job. Jim made a, an important uh, observation, though. Um, you know, when you went to McDonald's and you had sodas and all that stuff, it was usually for an occasion, right? Right. Uh, yeah. A birthday party or a celebration, you know, after a game or something. It's something we did, and and I was in the same boat. My grandparents used to take us to mcdonald's like maybe like twice a year it was like a little right. treat little thing to do but now it's become so commonplace and like you said marty it's cheap it's empty calories you don't and, have to cook um, you don't have you to, shop. Don't have to cook but i mean you can eliminate a, that you can eliminate cooking and you can eliminate shopping right and you just stop off at the fast food place on your way home and you know what i love kfc <laughs> I know you do. Yeah, yeah you do. that's funny. We've been well, talking you know about what? that. I used Popeyes, to get... for Popeyes. You know what I mean? I love for, Popeyes. For our, for for my sister, I could live on that. My sister's birthday and my birthday, we got to pick what dinner we wanted. When I was a kid, I always chose Geno's in Langley Park because oh, okay, a bucket, excellent. A bucket of fried a bucket, chicken. Yes, but bucket. that was once. <laughs> and then maybe another time at a picnic in the summer or something. But I have KFC, and of course. <sighs> We called it Geno's. We didn't call it all that. But uh, he just died, by the way, Geno Marchetti. But anyway. Oh, my God. He must have been in his 90s. Yep. And he lived right around right around here. I'm in uh, New Jersey. So he lived like in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, he was a star player for the Baltimore Colts back oh, in the 50s. And he would uh, go up against, like, Jim Brown. And his uh, his defensive line mate <laughs> was Mance Big Daddy Lipscomb. Yes, and he had Donovan on that line. <laughs> uh, Big Daddy. He said, Jimmy Brown said, that's the only guy that ever scared me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's what Jim Brown said. The ultimate compliment. Yeah. Anyway, let's not so, get man. too far. Yeah. Straight. Let's, uh, we got to get back to nutrition. I got a so lot of questions I, to ask you guys. Right. Well, well, real quick. So when I would, when we would have dinner, we all, you know, when I was growing up, until we got so engulfed in sports that my mom said, screw it, because it, it's too frustrating. Meatloaf and green beans. I love meatloaf. Mashed potatoes yes. and milk. That's what uh, we would have. We would have something very similar. Very butter. similar. 
and my mom was making, oh, of course and my mom was making that you know <sighs> she was making that every night so it wasn't uh, you know you can order burger king p- to be delivered to your house now i saw that <sighs> yeah no kidding and jim yeah. if you didn't finish every last little bite what would your mother tell you no, oh, we'd be going uh, in for seconds. Honestly, I mean, honestly, never, there, there, there never know, probably was never, that at your house, but she man. would say, finish it all because uh, there's people starving in Armenia. I never knew what that meant. <laughs> See, I always heard China. Okay. All right. Well, we just had different kinds. There were people starving, I'm sure, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a mother. It was my brother and my father, so we'd like do meatloaf. TV dinners and I'd have oh, three right. because there were only 69 Hunger cents man. a piece. Hungry man. <laughs> now this is pre-hungry man. Okay. This is back in the days of whatever they were, and it was yeah. it was pretty pretty gruesome. Yeah. <laughs> contributes to my current personality, but we need to keep moving. Okay. Let's talk about all right. Let's get into uh, more of the intricate details of, of dieting and things yeah. that we should do and shouldn't do. Um, let me ask you guys, can we eat a high carb, high fat diet or should it be one or the other and why? Uh, Jim, should if you, you do mix both. those two together? If you do both, you're going to get fat. Right. You, can't both. you can either have the carbs or the fat. You can't have both. Right. So you need to choose. You know, you know what both is? It's a pizza. A, Italian. McDonald's. Italian pizza. <laughs> yep. All that stuff. Yeah. So, but why, Marty, why Jimmy. is that? Why do you have yeah. to go, Jimmy? Jimmy's on it. Well, I, you know, the, the glucose will shuttle that fat right into your, into your bloodstream. Um, the, the, uh, you know, and then you, and then you got it. The, what's your body want to burn off, right? What's your body going to burn off when you do both? What's, what's the preferred? It's going to do glucose first, Marty, right? Marty. Wow. <laughs> I'll just guys step out for McDonald's. Anyway, I think it's glycogen first or glucose that it'll burn first. Um, and in order to get to the fat stores, it's going to take a while. Now, the you know I'm a big. You can do both. The the whole thing about the high carb mm-hmm. is that your their blood sugar fluctuations are are nuts. And that's why, or one of the reasons, besides they're trying to get as much protein as they can, <clears throat> is that people have to eat so frequently when they're doing that. You know, so the every two hours because your blood sugar starts to drop, man. Mm-hmm. When you eat a higher fat diet, you're satiated for a longer period of time. You know. Now you're a, you're a competitive bodybuilder, so off season, what do you like to adhere to? A lot of whiskey. Yeah, off season yeah. doesn't matter. We need, <laughs> so we need we're not we're not supposed to yeah, talk so about what that. I do, what I do, JP, is I make sure I get my protein in every day in the off season. But I have about four, three months there that's hunting season, and I don't give a crap about anything except getting my protein. So if I'm going to eat a gallon of cream of crab soup and 10 beers or whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that during hunting season. The rest of the year. Is that wrong? I, no, I think you need to soften up before you harden up. <laughs> yes, I love that philosophy. You know? uh, well, that's yours. I got that from you. Oh, that's right. that's right. That's right. That's right. I forgot that. Um, yeah, and then, you know, when, you know, for the last. You know, 15 weeks before a show or something like that. No alcohol. I don't deviate from the foods I eat either. It's just ground beef, sweet potatoes, and fish. Um, Terrific. And there's nothing else. I mean, except if I have a cheat day, which it would be a Friday, it'd be a, a dinner of uh, cheesesteak and then a couple desserts, something like that. But then that stops around six weeks out, something like that. Yeah. One, so it's a cheat meal. It ain't a cheat day. Meal and dessert, yeah. That's a cheat meal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not a cheat day. People. Nah, I, I, I have a tendency to lay on too much fat like that. Well, no kidding. Yeah. You know, because I can uh, eat a lot, man. Oh my God! I mean, you, <laughs> you, 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 a cheat day doesn't work because you dream about it. And you wake up and you go to IHOP. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and then it, and then it's downhill from there. Yeah, and then the toughest thing is the next day getting back on it when you do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and getting over the hangover. Yeah, but I've done both. I've done a higher carb, and it's just you are so freaking hungry. So with the, with the ground beef, I, I'm just not hungry. I mean, I'm hungry when it gets down to, okay, now I'm only going to have ground beef in the morning. The rest of the day is, is cod or tilapia or something. That's when you're in that phase that nobody can function on. You know, you're just forcing yourself to function on it. 
Um, but when you're when I'm first starting off and I switch to the ground beef and sweet potatoes, I'm I'm not hungry because of the the fat in the ground beef, you know, that's satiating. And then the sweet potatoes got the fiber, slows slows it down even more. So uh, now, when you're dieting, when you're dieting for a show, you're getting sub five percent body fat, right? Uh, that's pretty tough, I think. Um, I'm between five Close and ten, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of you got to be really focused mentally and strong mentally to to really stick to all this and yeah. well here's the key it. here's the, the key with that is you know it has to the the downside has to be a lot more than the upside so meaning if i cheated once on my diet that would be it for me that would mentally that would be it so that would be a huge mm -hmm. downside now you cheated on your diet now where do you go from here oh you don't have enough discipline to do that so that's what's, I mean, that's one of the reasons it stops me from doing that is because it'll blow the whole thing. I, I can't, I don't have that type of personality where I can say, oh, let me have a cup of rice. A cup of rice equals Ben and Jerry's equals 10 Krispy Kremes, it, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. So I have to just stick to the, you know, stick to the same thing every every single day. And just keep eating the same stuff and never deviate. For uh, other people, like if you look at Dorian's, and Marty can speak on this, he had a lot of different foods in there. He would have chicken, he would have steak, he would have oats, he would have rice, he would have, but it was regimented, you know, where he did the same thing every got, day. And it got narrower and narrower, mm. right? but he he never dipped below 3,500 calories. Yeah, he was burning that's it a lot of That's a lot of damn food Yeah, uh, for a yeah. guy going up to the Olympia, but he was supporting 260 pounds of muscle, yeah. Yeah, at three percent. Yeah, I mean, in, in addition, and I'm not saying Dorian took any of this stuff, but I mean, I think he he says what he took, but you know, growth hormone and and all that stuff. And you know, well, if we want to get into the chemicals, I mean, no, I know, but I'm just saying you can different. eat more. You can eat more when you're taking that kind of stuff. Well, also, and also, of also stuff. when you're weighing three hundred pounds yeah. in the off season with the ten percent body fat percentile. Right. Yeah, he never you got. Look, you look at blood and guts, and yeah. that's a 10% body fat percentile. It ain't 11, it ain't 12, it ain't eight, it's 10. Yeah. A seasoned eye will tell you that. And that's a guy weighing 300, and he is just tossing 150s around like they were uh, baby rattles. Yeah, I mean, he did everything right. And he, never, uh, and he, and he didn't have an off season where he ate like shit either. I think he said it. In five he years, ate, he, had he ate two big. I, I mean, I, he ate big. He was, yeah. you know, 5,500, 6,000 calorie right, but guy. Body, but he was, was a huge fucking guy, right? Free contest foods, but more of them, right? And I, I, he liked uh, he liked bagels and he liked uh, he liked rice. You know, we uh, like ground beef. Yeah. He told me he said uh, fat made him sick. Yeah. So now he says, if he had to change it he would have added more good fats into his diet. Well, I, to, I think that because of his taste preferences, that would have been like an MCT. Okay. I don't think it would have been him like ordering a rib steak. Uh, okay. I went out to lunch with him and his then new girlfriend at the time in the oddest locale and circumstances. We were in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh yeah, and, uh, exit 10. Yeah. So we went, anyway, we went to a restaurant and uh, he was very specific in the way that he, he ordered. And he said, could you do this? Could you do that? And the guy was like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. We can do this. But he was designing a fat free lunch and he wasn't training for anything. But he said, he said, is fat just really kind of gags him? Yeah. But because of that, he can add in rice. He can add in starch. Right. If you're low fat. <laughs> then you're allowed starch. If you're like uh, other guys who are like fat guys, then you got to let go of the starch. You can't yeah. have both. You can't have fat and starch. You're just going to end up fat. Right. One or the other. And uh, protein is always a constant. And I think fiber is always a constant. Yeah, that's a good thing about the sweet potatoes. Yeah. What? Uh, let me ask you guys something. What? Um, what foods in unlimited amounts? Uh, what foods can you eat in unlimited amounts without? Pretty much any, any green any green vegetable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, what are you talking about? You got to go over to the 
shrimp buffet. Oh, I uh, thought he, in I thought Vegas. He no, you go, to, you go to Vegas. You go to the one of those incredible buffets at like the Mirage, and you go to just start eating shrimp and uh, crab legs. <laughs> shrimp, right. crab legs, Jim, carrot Jim, spinach. I mean, is that not? I, I oh, have you heard. can eat unlimited amounts of meat. I thought you meant uh, other, yeah. other than yeah. protein. Yeah, meat. So, so meat and fibrous uh, carbs, you can eat well, as much as you want. No, no, you need to think of it different. It has. You need to think of it as lean protein. Lean proteins. It's not like chicken meat and, because yeah. meat could be laden with fat. Yeah. If meat, meat is laden with fat, that means oh, guess what, buddy? You can't have oh the starch. Right. Right. Yep. You're so right. we start with lean protein. That could be shrimp. That could be. I heard that at his peak that um Lavroni was i think his his favorite protein was like flounder yeah flounder. some very expensive fish right and he was eating six pounds a day to get cut well you know that's true because he, on his last video Lavroni 2000 or something he has this couple i don't know if they were owners of the gym with him they cook yes, for him yes, every those, they cook those, for him every day the lady, and they the, show, the white, the white they lady show. with the blonde wig. Yeah, exactly. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they show the cooked uh, trays of food that they prepare each day for him. The yeah. rice, the rice and the flounder, the, the rice and the flounder, the rice okay. and the broccoli. Yeah. Yeah, and the broccoli. And yeah. then before a workout, he'd eat like a bunch of like, it would be like spaghetti. <clears throat> you know how you boil, boil the noodle yeah and then you drain the noodle yeah well instead of putting it you know saucing it he would put uh he would just serve it to him and his training partner and they didn't he said you better read up because we're gonna kick each other's ass in the training session yeah and then off they'd go to whatever the two hour plus slaughter fest that right. bodybuilders would do i mean bodybuilders were high volume they think they're high intensity, but there were moderate intensity guys, and uh, you could get massively big. They found out that you. Anyway, we're really getting off. <laughs> let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you guys a, a quick question about rice. Okay. Yes. We All right. Rice. I love rice. I love rice too. Oh. I eat brown rice, and I've really yeah. acquired a taste for it. Got to uh, cut back in your fat. Got to cut back on your fat, buddy. Exactly. But let me ask you the difference between brown rice and white rice. Is there really any difference as far as, I mean, white rice is obviously. I don't know. It's, probably got, a, it's it, right? probably got a differing glycemic index number. Right. So there may be one is whatever, 96 and the other is 84. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. There so, you I go. mean, it's not, it's not a huge difference, right? Right. What, right. what do you prefer? Well, I kind of so prefer eat, brown eat, rice right now, but so you want to eat I pick before one, dude. What do you after prefer? Your if you have to have it. Yeah, I, what do you prefer? Well, I prefer brown, but I started eating well, brown for you know a reason. What? Eat your brown rice. It will give you permission right now. Yeah, I don't. You? I don't think you need to worry about the difference. I think no, you need no. to, the timing of it. It depends on what your goals are. If you're trying to get bigger, then eat as much rice as you want. He's pretty big as it is, Jim. You know, if you're trying to drop weight, then I would just eat that right before your workout, you know, an hour before your workout, and then in mm. that hour after your workout. Hour after, it'll burn mm. it right up. Hour before, mm. you burn it right up. Yeah. That, that, that also would be a fantastic uh, incentive to work out. You get to eat rice. To go right. To... Delicious, delicious. Could yeah. You have, now, yeah. could you have butter on it? No, that would probably be wrong. Eh. No, but you, no, but you know what? You can put uh, but, butter flavored MCT on it. Which oh, like or how do. about some just straight coconut MCT oil? I like yeah, that'd uh, that flavor. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, but back, let me tell you about my experience because I have a very unusual perspective in this. I wrote 83 feature articles for the Weeder Empire at their peak for the right. magazines, primarily muscle and fitness, but also flex and prime. My job, I wrote 63 training articles for muscle and fitness. My job was to interview the top bodybuilders in the world on how they train, how they ate. So I got a very broad extended mm, perspective on what these guys did and there were certain commonalities that emerged right 
and they kind of broke into two broad camps and they were either um, primarily, you know, they, uh, they preferred the carbs and they could reduce the fat like Dorian or they preferred the fat and in turn would reduce the carbs. Yeah. Right. Well, what you found the constant was the protein, right? Yes, the protein and the fiber. Okay. You could have you could have as if if the protein was lean, you could have as much as you wanted, JP. Mm-hmm. You could have as much steam shrimp. You could eat three pounds of steam shrimp, buddy. And like bread. Like bread. You, and you could eat uh, five portions of broccoli, like bread. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> And, yeah, and and you would be dieting, right, Jim? Yep, that's right. Yeah, I mean, if you were, yeah. You know, now, I'm just saying that is diet food. That is clean. That's clean protein. That's fiber. Fiber. You can have unlimited amounts of fiber as long as it's not doused with other Butter. stuff. Yeah, butter, whatever, dressing. sauce, whatever, dressing. Uh, and I, also, I you know I don't have any problem if you want to uh, saute some fiber vegetable in a pan with some quality olive oil. I mean that is really not going to broccoli is great that way. Throw in some all, garlic. All vegetables are great that way. Yeah, seriously. So anyway, so the 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 constant was uh, the protein and the fiber. Uh, before we get off on that, back in uh, the Arnold day, guys like Dave Draper, they would get ripped, and Frank Zane, on the infamous fish and water diet. Right. Dr- Draper was like some sort of a, I don't know. Like a, a, or, <laughs> I was actually going to say like some sort of a concentration camp guy. He yeah. lived on canned tuna and water mm. in order to get ripped. I mean, I'd shoot myself after the yeah, third yeah, I did that for... Uh, did you? In 2014, <sighs> 13, I only had seven and a half weeks to lose like 30 or 40 pounds. So I started off on the beef the first week, and then I called Rich Sulky, who always helps me out. Uh, he said, it's time to go belt nap, Jimmy. He always says belt nap. He always says belt nap. But anyway, belt nap. And that was a uh, reference to Tim Belknap, a yeah. one Olympia, who went on tuna and water and got amazingly ripped big in America and was like 250 and got down to like 198 anyway so I did that and I ate cabbage tuna and that was it protein and fiber yeah and uh yeah protein it's and the fiber. problem and is I didn't it. know about I didn't know about MCT well I should have <laughs> taken that but your brain oh, well, when, can't when function was, without the fat it's just, I know, it's just yeah but but it is effective Oh, no question. But it gives, oh, no. but it gives you an energy source though too, where you're not taking in any carbs or anything. So you now you've got some energy a little bit. You now what you're talking what about, including the MCT. MCT, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's your latest. I mean, tell them about your. Okay, now let's just say Jim's on the wrong side of forty, and this is a guy that's gotten down to that uh, five to eight percent body fat percentile. What three times in the last five years? Yeah, three times in the last five years. This isn't uh, theoretical knowledge. This is empirical knowledge. And he had expert help from an expert dude, uh, an old timer of my era, a guy named uh, Dr. Rich Salky, who uh, was a student of your dad's, right? Yeah, he was a graduate assistant for my dad when my dad was a professor at the University of Maryland. And uh, well, and Rich had a what was his? Uh... He won the he won his his class in the Mister America. He won the he won the overall Pan Am championship. Uh, and his his PhD was in an appropriate uh, area too. Kinesiology, yeah, yeah. kinesiology, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Rich had hardcore competitive experience, IFBB level, right? So now he's kind of. Uh, uh, morphed into a, a, a guru, and he's been mentoring Jim, particularly on the diet. It's like '83. Right? Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean the 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 harshness, the truth of it, the 
the coldness of it and it's just delivered like clinically it's just yeah. like this is <laughs> this is how extreme it need be in order to be effective yeah i mean i think if i was always within five pounds or ten pounds of a contest diet you know i wouldn't have to to be as extreme i would still want to eat the same things every day but you know i want to enjoy my life the rest of the year too so well, that would I, be a horrible rush yeah <laughs> it would it would but you know <laughs> i mean you couldn't you couldn't hang out with me anymore no we wouldn't have any fun but, uh, I, those 12 weeks before or sometimes it's only like i said seven and a half those you're, weeks, I don't talk to anybody. I don't. I don't go anywhere. You know, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing shit. You but know? tell t tell them tell them what you were reduced to. This is yeah. The calories. Uh, and the cabbage and the. I oh, mean, yeah. well, the, the, yeah, uh, so. how many how many weeks was the prep process for the competition? Well, the last one I did it right. I did twelve weeks. Okay. Right. Now, how how did you and Rich break it down. How did you break the 12 weeks down? What did you start off? off what did you start off from? So like two and a half pounds of ground beef. And then sweet potatoes are more like I always think of an emergency break glass. So when you're feeling like run down, when you go right before your workout, things like that, you have a, the sweet potato. So it's anywhere from two to six a day, depending two on six sweet potatoes a day. Yes. Okay. Jim, let me ask you a question. When you start oh, wait, this. Wait wait, 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 just a second. What else? The uh, red protein cabbage? Shake. Protein shake. Oh, yeah. As he would always say, as much vegetables as you want, but I wanted uh, raw. <laughs> that sounds crazy. People always think it sucks, but it's really pretty good. I buy a head of cabbage, slice it really thin, put Splenda on it, and Splenda. eat it and eat it like that. Okay. Well, I mean, whatever. That that to you was that that was Run. a great Run. way to get your fiber in. But he but he was telling you to get fiber in. Well, he knows that that's what the sweet potatoes too. If you eat six sweet potatoes a day, you're you're going to the bathroom. Right. Uh, you know. uh, now, the protein shake, how big and how uh, often? You don't want to know what? I was thinking about this last night. Up to 75 grams. And how many times? Once a day. I would do uh, that at uh, night. At night? Bef uh, before bed? Yep. Before my, after my last cardio session. So, <laughs> was it just powder and water? Yep. Powder, water. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I make it into a pudding. Yeah. So I make it really thick and then put yeah, it Yeah, that would probably be the closest done. thing to a taste treat you had all day. Was right. that uh, casein? No, I, and I know that the research shows casein is better because it's casein. You know, slower moving. Yeah. But uh, no, it's way. It's way. So I have okay. that. And you look forward to it. Oh, my God. It's such a treat. The rest yeah. of the year, I'm like, I used to eat that shit. And then yeah. now, you know, when I'm dieting, it's like, oh, my God, I can't wait to have my shit. Was the, was the pudding, was making it into a pudding just part of like convincing yourself it was a treat or and was it just so you uh it would so take longer to digest shake, it's like nothing you know it takes two minutes yeah it's not filling I or put anything. In those three scoops water, and I, if it's watery yeah and but, i savor it man but but real real quick i wanted to ask you before many, you wait 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 how many grams in that 75 that's a lot yeah 75 yeah. Yeah. But uh, before uh, you... any carbs was it just pure protein no, no just so protein. no carbs so it'd be uh, around four o'clock. I'd have my last source of carbs, and that would be like a sweet potato or two. And then, you know, the next meal is is the protein shake. And so there's time? no carbs from four. I would say around eight, eight thirty. Okay. Right. And I go to bed at nine, nine thirty. So, um, you know, then the next morning, always do cardio first, um, then eat, then lift. How long cardio? Uh, hour. No. Last five weeks is an hour first thing in the morning, um, uh, but never less than 30 minutes. Less than 30 minutes, I feel like a wuss, man. You can't do less than 30 minutes. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, Rich always has a good point. He's like, the more sessions you can do, not necessarily the longest ones, but so let's say you have two hours to do, you split that into 30 minute sessions. As soon as your, this is what he always says, as soon as your metabolism starts to slow down, bam, you're crushing it again. Starts to slow down, bam, you're crushing it again. So you're just burning. Constantly. Plus, you got your weight workout in there too. You know, you got to be fortunate enough to be a strength coach and have a gym around you, or you know, be a writer or whatever, and have a bike right next to you. But uh, you know, the more the more sessions, I think, is 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 better. But you know, in the real world, two sessions would be good. That's what Len Schwartz said too. Is he that said, right? Yeah, he said optimally, it's best to spread the cardio work over the course of the day. I think it also alert alertens you. Uh, I don't know if the, it, it, mentally 
you're kind of foggy and fatigued, but if you do some cardio or yeah. I have dumbbells on the porch and they're kind of light, you know, like 35s and 45s, you know what I mean? 50s. Yep. But I'll go out and I might do just walk out and I just every time I walk out, I'll do like 15 reps and yeah. it just wake, wakes my ass up. Right. Yeah. JP, you have uh, access to that stuff too, right? To what? <laughs> to to weights? Well, I mean, the cardio you're, equipment. You're kind of a high volume trainer. No, I'm not really a high volume trainer. I mean, um, the best results I've ever gotten were doing like the the Dorian type training. How long would your sessions last? When I'm really doing the you know, like say for chest, I'll do three all out sets, you know, one on the flat, one on the incline, and maybe a fly. That's a Dorian esque type training uh, volume, I think. You know, I can get in and out of there in 45 minutes. But you do just the one body part? No, I'll do, uh, like today I did uh, chest and triceps. Okay, well, how long would that take? Well, I did a little bit more volume today, so it took <laughs> took a little over. So you are a volume trainer. <laughs> I'm just asking. Uh, it for depends the on it depends on I your definition. You get the number, buddy. We don't have to. Just, well, I mean, no, I did. Uh, I started with incline presses, and I did two all-out sets on that. But I did a bunch of warm-ups to to get to the weight that I was doing. And I, I did. Would, uh, keep going. And then I actually did uh, because everybody was on the flat bench then i did the hammer decline press i did a couple of all out sets on that uh actually i did two or three sets on that and that was it for chest then i moved on to triceps Mm -hmm. um so i did did a few different exercises on that okay but but yeah it all depends on what your definition what do you think your total elapsed time was you know what? I took it slow today because my shoulders were bothering me. I did a lot of warm ups. So I, I was right. probably in there for an hour and 20 minutes today. Right. Okay. But, you know, I had to I had to really just take it slow and do my warm ups. No, and, no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, no. You know. I hear criticism there. And now, Jim, you're doing, um, at that point, you're doing what, cardio every day, or you do that all year long? I, two, I, hours, I do two hours a day. But, yeah, that's for a show, but that's because all year show. long, 30, 30 minutes minimum all year long. <clears throat> I did, you know, you. That, my first thing I think of when I wake up is take a dog out, get on the bike. And then in the morning, for the first 15 minutes, you don't even know you're on the freaking thing. Everything's kicking in, your caffeine, whatever else you take, right. you know, and then you're, you're knocked out 30 minutes. Now I'm awake. Now my mind is clear because before I got on that bike, I was thinking, oh, I need to write this short story. Oh, I need to call this guy. Oh, I need to pay this bill. And then. After I get done, I'm like, oh, I can handle that stuff, no problem. It's the strangest thing. One at uh, a time. One at a time. Yeah. Have you tried? Have you tried hit training? I just recently started. Yeah, this. I did. Um, I did some of the, you know, like 30 second hard, 30 second easy. Uh, I don't mind that. It, it it makes it okay. But when you're down to like 800 calories, I'm not fucking doing that shit. Yeah, yeah it had to be. That'd be tough to do because. You, so here's what I'm doing. I got this uh, this fan bike uh, a couple months ago. And I was, I've never been a, a fan of cardio because to me, just sitting there and I'm going, oh my God, well, the, the things that I need to be doing, like you're, like you're saying. And to me, I, I don't know, I just can't sit there and do that for a half hour or an hour. Now I'm, I'm reading all this uh, research on HIT training, interval training, and I got this, this fan bike. I wanted to do four limb cardio. Right. You know, Marty's got a lot of great articles, and he goes way back with Dr. Lynn Swartz of Heavy Hands, yep. who was kind of the pioneer of the, the four limb cardio. So I wanted something that would do, you know, all, all four limbs at the, at the same time. So I started researching the HIT training, and the, the one, the program that I'm, I'm doing now is you do 20 seconds of just all out. And, so, you know, some people say 20 seconds. That's who can't do that. No, trust me. If you're on a fan oh, bike. God, no, that's way long. Go ahead. And now you're, what's, the, yeah. what's the rest interval? No, but if you're doing 20 seconds, you can't do any more all out. Well, you're doing Tabata. You're so, doing a Tabata workout. I Gym think inter- Tabata, the, but I think Tabata is more like, would be like even, even rest and even work. So this is. 
Oh, this really? is 20 oh. seconds, I think. This is 20 seconds on in about two minutes rest. Yesterday I had to do two and a Jesus. half minutes rest. Wow. What I, you know, I couldn't recover fast enough. I'm still in that, <laughs> in that, you know, look, I, I'm 293, right? I've been a weightlifter all my life. I've never yeah. been a fan of cardio. So this is something that I'm easing into. And I'm to the point uh, now where I just, yeah. 20 seconds is way too long for you, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. Back me up here, buddy. At a 295-pound guy, 20 seconds is way too long. Is that like the JP? Is that like the protocol that's that they you should describe? you should be you should be starting with like 10 seconds. Yeah, right? but you got to understand. I'm not just your... I'm not just starting out at this point though. Okay. Oh, you've so been I, doing it. So I've been doing this for now a couple of months, and I've built up to this. Well, you're still 290. It don't work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was even you know, heavier when I started. Oh, okay. Well, how much weight have you lost since you started it? And how many? Oh, I don't know. Make? Probably about five. Okay, so you lost five pounds, and you do that how many times a week? So I'm doing like uh, three or four times a week, but I just really started the the interval training like just kicking ass for 20 seconds and before that i was you know would take these little 10 seconds boosts or do it for 10 minutes straight at a good pace but i had to build up to this uh but the thing that i wanted to mention about this there's all kinds of great research behind this and i'm really studying up on it but the thing that i like about this and for anybody that doesn't like to do cardio this this parallels weight training, and this is the reason that I've embraced it so much. So what do we do with weight training? You go all out, you know, 15, 20 seconds, whatever it is on, say, a bench press or a squat. Set it down. You rest two or three minutes, and then do it again. This is what I like to do. I'm not sitting there looking at the clock, waiting to, at, at, you know, is my time up yet? Can I get done? You are just focused on just hauling ass for 20 seconds and then recovering. Can I recover in time? So you do you, 20 seconds, two minutes off, then how many sets of that? So you do, so you do it in rounds, and I'm doing uh, four or five rounds of that. And I'll tell you, at the end of that, I am just done. And what I found is that for like an hour or two after that, my body heat is just like going crazy. I'm like mm. a flaming inferno. <laughs> Well, good. You know. Yeah. That's what so that's want. what I'm after. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you guys in the loop and let you know how yeah. I do on this. But I, I really What's like your, it. What is your device? So the. What are you now, doing? Our, we sell all kinds of. We sell the assault. I'm just stuff. asking. What are you What are you doing it on? What's your? What I you use the, it's it's the spirits made by Spirit Fitness. It's the uh, fan bike. Oh, okay. Wait, and uh, and arms and legs. It's got the arms and the pedals. Arms and legs. And the big fan. When you sprint for your 20 seconds, are you sitting on the seat or are you standing up? I'm sitting, but I've got it up to 100 RPMs. Uh, I believe it. I mean, I'm hauling on that thing. Uh, yeah, you're probably yeah, like you John, know, but, John but, Henry for the first 11 but seconds. But really, that's the key if you're going to do that kind of program. You have to give it your all for the 20 seconds. Otherwise, it doesn't count. I mean... Yeah. There's, there's a we lot have, of different things we have, say. we have different opinions on that my brother <laughs> no one's asking me what well, oh, Marty, well what, do, what you do you do you oh, oh, oh thank you for asking you now you did a whole study on the uh now we're not bike. talking studies yesterday what i did as i've been doing is i went to my local park and i have this beautiful wood canopy with I have a wood chip tree lined that's about 150 yards so I'm just getting back into it but per the advice of Dan Johns I'm doing eight all out sprints right yep now because I'm just getting back into this thing I'm kind of gassing out at about 40 yards mm. Last summer, before I quit, I was up to like, you know, 80 yards, running hard, right? Mm -hmm. So now I've got to get back into it. But <clears throat> this number eight is really working well for me. And Jim, what I'm doing is, you know, 
no more jackrabbit starts. If I use the jackrabbit starts, hamstring pull. Mm. So first uh, third of the sprint, uh, you know, I'm going up to 50 percent. Second right. third, I'm putting the accelerator down, taking up to 80. Last third, pedal to the metal. Let's go all out. Yeah, that's great. And I go all out until I tie up. Mm-hmm. Up, 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 you know, and I do that eight times. That's and I have my little bitch, my little man. my little jog back to you know the start line. Yeah, it's it's fabulous. I'm listening. Yeah, it's a good to, workout. I, you know, I wish you were there. I'm listening to Miles Davis. <laughs> now, how long does it take you to recover between sprints? Well, yeah, you, I, you jog back to the start line, and then you go right away. And go right away. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm uh, you know, within thirty seconds. What I do is I take a wood stick and I break it every time I come back. I put a wood stick on a picnic table. And that's number, you know, number one. That's, I do shit like that too. Go ahead. But if yeah. I don't, if I don't, I will forget. Me yeah. too. Oh my god. So I do that, and I put it up there, and no one's out there. No one's ever out there. Yeah. The I mean, I would say outdoor cardio is the way beautiful. to go. Oh if my you, god. If you, if you have an area. Surreal. To it's surreal, right? And running all out—that is the equivalent of what we do. And the ability to, you know, and I'm sure I am not running within one tenth of my ability at my peak, but it doesn't matter because I'm running all out now. Right. It's all I can do. And that's and I'm running hard to what JP's doing on the intervals. It's, and it's, I'm, 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 I'm talking to a guy, and I'm actually trying to run faster. I have a technique where I'm trying to actually get better, and it's very exciting. Yeah. Right? And I'm, um, I'm interspersing that with these 20 minute weight training sessions. Yeah. What did I do today? I went out and squatted, but, uh, you know, I did, uh, you know, 95, 135, 185, 225, 255, 285, 315. Boom. I'm done. Right. In between, I was doing a set of leg curls, set of calf raises, set of leg curls. So I was going one, two, three rests, one, two, three rests, one, two, three rests. Because, like you, Jim, I can't stand to be laying, sitting around between yeah. sets. Yep. And if I'm sitting around, why not do some leg curls? And I've yeah. got some really hardcore uh, techniques that we're using on the leg curl. But it ties into the nutrition again, because depending upon where you are depends on how many calories you take in and the cleanliness of those calories. And when I'm training like this, my calories are not that clean. Uh, in the summertime is when I usually tend to get the lightest, the cleanest in the eating, and the highest volume in training. Yeah, it's almost like our natural rhythm. Yeah, I think in the summertime I'm doing like more long distance kind of jog shit, you know, sightseeing as I'm doing my running, and then my weight training's kind of, you know, more exercises and less weight, and more feel. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, and the calories are less, but the activity is more. Summertime, right? Right, right. Yeah, you always talk about um, seasonal eating. Well, if you think about it, man, winter is for stews. Yeah, and yeah. heavy. You know what I mean? Heavy yeah. things like that. Right. And, roast, and, uh, roast meat. Your body out. naturally, right. evolutionarily, wants to have a little extra cushion. You know, it's colder out. You know. And, and then, then as you get to the, the days start to get longer, that's when you're supposed to lean out. That's what, you know, that's when you can afford a few mistakes on your diet, things like, you know, it's just the natural rhythm of the whole thing. And then <laughs> after they ate the roast lamb, they went out to the garage and the snow blew into the garage as they squatted <laughs> and everyone made personal records. Yeah. For, for someone that's eating clean, pretty clean, you know, the, the average guy that's going to the gym, you know, three, four times a week, trying to eat clean and all that. As far as um, cheat days, is it okay just to eat clean during the week and, you know, just eat whatever you want on the weekend? Yeah, I think or you maybe... have to define clean. I think people uh, yeah. are very confused uh, on what they're supposed to eat. <laughs> what they yeah, Jim, what Jimmy, please set them straight here. Okay. Well, I mean, I can tell you what I do, and then you can give me advice. Okay. So, all right, so I go to the, the gym three days a week and, and – train with weights and then I do cardio about four times a week and you know every two three hours I'm eating some sort of 
usually lean protein, uh, maybe a little bit of carbs, like a brown rice or something. Try to eat a vegetable when I can. Um, very little fruit. So I do that all week. It's you know, like religion, every two or three hours, because I work from home, and I can I can do that. It's easy for me. On the weekends, um, I'll eat st still. I'll eat less. I'm I'm a little less. Um, I, I stick to my my two or three hour thing. Maybe a little bit less. Um, but I'll take a couple of meals, maybe one on friday night maybe one on saturday night and just eat and sometimes i'll eat a lot like we'll go have mexican food or whatever just eat whatever the hell i want but the rest of the day saturday and sunday i'll eat pretty pretty clean now mm -hmm. is that okay could i do yeah, more I mean, if i, I wanted okay with the saturday thing i don't know if i would continue it on to sunday yeah which yeah, i usually like don't lay down some fat if you do that i mean I, I would also say this and this has always been rich's advice you have to do your cardio anyway you know, I, I don't yeah. use it three or four days a week, but I, I would do that as on my cheat days or whatever that, you know, call that. Um, also, I wouldn't change that. You know, I would keep the, the cardio up. And then you have to decide if you're taking in 300 grams of carbs a day, you know, and then uh, you're probably not burning much fat during a week. And then if you're going to eat more carbs on the weekends, what are what are our goals here? You know what I mean? If you're trying to burn fat, then I would say the carbs have to be really low during the week, you know, maybe, you know, for your size you know, 200 grams maximum, maximum. Um, and then, then you can bump it up to 800 to a thousand on Saturday only. And then back on sun, back to your diet on Sunday. It's harsh. <clears throat> and, and, to, and to <laughs> me, I mean, I, mean, I mean, it is, it's harsh. And to yeah, me, I, just, you, you, I think you have to figure out how many carbs you're taking in during the week. Before yeah. Which I don't, or, I don't count that. And, I do. I and, do tend and, to count and all protein. the food. All the food is super clean. Yeah, right. It's like bake this and grilled that and no nothing. So if you right. if you're gonna cheat like on a Saturday, okay, <laughs> would it? He keeps steering us back to cheat. Uh, no, to listen, about... I I don't care about that, but I do have a question. <laughs> if you are gonna cheat, and look, it's for a lot of people, it's just satisfying because they've been doing. It's mentally satisfying, I guess. Yeah, in addition, you can have a social life if you're... Right. You know, you got family. Go, you beer, right. Uh, you don't always want to be that pain in the ass that goes out to dinner with everybody and can't eat anything and, you know. Well, but, that's yeah. why I was never a bodybuilder. The, but, the, but the question I have is, to me, it makes common sense that uh, if you're going to cheat on a Saturday, better to eat one big cheat meal, just whatever the heck you want, rather than spread that out during the day oh, wow. um, because then you're constantly kind of raising your your uh, insulin levels and all that throughout the day instead of all at once right it depends it's a, it depends on how strict your diet is during the week if and then it depends on how much of a binge eater you are so if you give me the whole day forget about it i'm, I'm not <clears throat> I can wake yeah. up in the morning with Krispy Kremes and I'm going to be easy. Mardi Gras, you know, so, uh, it's, yeah. we're, we're starting up, we're waking up with beer and donuts. Yeah. I mean, it was, it's a, it's and a, then it's, it's downhill from there. But if you, so my, my first wife could, it could do. So when we, first of many, no, my, uh, so when I did the, the anabolic diet, Moro de Pasquale's diet, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. five days of 50 grams of carbs <laughs> under, which is easy for me when you eat a lot of fat. Yep. And then he would say, Saturday, Sunday, eat what you want, unless you go crazy on Saturday, you look in the mirror, when you start to smooth out, you know you can't do Sunday. Well, my first wife didn't have that type A nutty personality, so she would eat a bagel, and a couple hours later have a have a have you know uh, some spaghetti. With me, I could only do one day because, like I said, dozens of donuts and, oh, and yeah. things of, of that nature. So Delicious. it comes in well, you know, when you're that type of personality, you got to know yourself a little bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I think, it, like, you know, if you're talking about donuts, wouldn't it just be better to eat 12 that morning and be done with it? Go, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Rather than Ooh. eat three here, three in two hours. Oh, I don't know about that. But I'm, I'm <laughs> well, saying, I mean, you can't. Well, matter. You know, come on. Yeah. It's, you either have a, I mean, a cheat day is ridiculous. I mean, a cheat day is like, I mean, no, 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 no. You get a cheat meal. It means you have to go out at at 
five o'clock at night until yeah. whenever you go to bed and have at it. Right. Yeah. But the next morning you're back on the wagon train. And I would say on Friday, super strict. Really yeah, folks hard. Absolutely. And you you'll know fill what? Out and right. Sunday morning you'll wake up and you'll look <laughs> nutty. And and you will feel terrible. Oh, your joints will feel like shit. That's for sure. Oh, you will be no sick. Question. You'll be you know, sick. You know, there's a uh, difference between poisoning yourself with alcohol. Oh yeah. You know, there's there's a difference. I always think about this. There's a a health aspect and a longevity aspect of these diets, where everybody I know that has switched to a higher fat, lower carb diet says their joints feel better, they sleep better, their cognitive functions better, all all that stuff. So I think. Right. When you when you start, you definitely for performance. A lot of this stuff is we're, we've been talking about, but for longevity, for health, for your you know. Um, yeah, because your cholesterol will go down too from that. Yeah, it's you know. Yeah, I know. Get into the whole that. cholesterol thing. I mean, oh, come on. there's a lot of conflicting. Well, the are. the other way. Okay, let's get off of uh, cheat meals. Marty's okay. favorite subject. Let, for can a I just tell you? Let me just tell you this little journey I went on with how I sort of discovered what really works for me and, and people I've trained and stuff. So when I got to Penn and worked for Rob Wagner, oh, yeah. you know, I'd been talking to Kirk and, and stuff like that. And Kirk's be, between three and 500 grams of carbs a day. And I was like, oh, and he's like, yeah, I'm eating low carbs. Well, I didn't know Kirk that was low carbs. For me, that was making me fat, you know? <laughs> and so I would eat a big hoagie roll with tuna in it and mayonnaise. And I thought I was eating, you know, and I'd have some uh, metric shakes. And then I'd have, you know, I, I was eating a lot of carbs too. And, Wag and Rob Wagner's like, it's that freaking bread you're eating, man. That's why you're not dropping any weight. And I didn't understand. He goes, here, read this book. And it was The Zone by Dr. Sears. Mm. And it's all, you know, it's all about glycemic index. It's all about portion control and all that stuff. You know, a third of your plate is protein. You know, this, this a lot of vegetables. So problem was, you starve on that diet when you're, I was competing in powerlifting. You starve on that diet. So... When I got into, so then Wag said, here, Moro, his friend Moro de Pasquale, came up with this diet. Try this. It was like a godsend. Oh, no kidding. Because you, you could have bacon and eggs for breakfast. And listen, if I was super hungry and I was on the road, I could stop at 7-Eleven, get pepperoni and cheese, and I'm still on the diet, and you're still losing weight. <laughs> you know, It was an amazing thing. Um, and that sort of started the evolution. Then after that, I started focusing on the quality of the foods. But, you know, that was sort of the evolution of what I thought was low carb. And it also occurred to me, oh, Kirk's not as carb sensitive as I am. I look at a piece of bread and, you know, my weight stalls. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, gets, he can have 300 grams and he's still getting ripped. So, you know, it showed me the individual differences. But it also showed me that drop that sugar that, you know, the problem with the 90s was that, the low fat, high carb thing was was a, a, the dogma. You know, every bodybuilder did it. Every athlete. Remember Martina Navratilova? Oh yeah. You know, and all that that Robert Haas diet and all that stuff was well, super high carbs. Dude, I, every time I ate like that, I got fat and went to sleep. You know? Why? <laughs> Why? Because carbs spike insulin. Right. And and if you're, there if there's insulin in the bloodstream, there can be no fat burning. That's a physiological fact. So if your system is consistently flooded with insulin, you, you can never burn fat. Yeah. So if you live in the high carb, refined carb diet, and, and let us not forget the low carb, light, L-I-T-E, low fat revolution, where these people put out all these freeze dried and frozen foods that are you know loaded with trans fats and they're spiking insulin through the roof, but they're making money off the fact that they're, uh, you know, well, low fat. we've got yeah. the fat free. That started in the 80s. Out of yeah. yeah. There's all it those made, bodybuilders. They made fortunes on that. Mm -hmm. People made yeah. fortunes on that. Right? Well, it's funny. My neighbor, I went home. I don't know where I was. I was coaching somewhere. I came back to Maryland. I was talking to my neighbor. He goes, man, you eat all that that fat free stuff and you haven't lost any weight <laughs> like, and it occurred to me maybe there's a different way you know yeah. a different what way. was the different way what was the what was the breakthrough well the sugar you gotta you, you can't have the sugar and you want to add the fat you don't want to so, add fat. ergo uh bye-bye starch hello uh prime rib 
That's right. And, and it's more enjoyable. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you know, and, um, and, and then if you have to have and bread, then, you have And then for the plate. cheat meal, you have beer. You have beer and cheesesteaks. Yeah. yeah, or and uh, cheesecake. Yeah. It's okay. You know, whole, deep, I can easily eat a whole cheesecake. You know, Deep Pasquale was a <laughs> really, really good guy, man. Uh, really good guy. Yeah, Mar Mara. And he was a real deal. He was he and was walk a, the walk, man. He was I an mean, IPF world champion. World. And, and, and different weight classes. He did different yeah. weight classes and still deadlift to seven. So, I mean, ridiculous yeah. amounts of it. So, when he was writing something, you know, that's his credibility. I'm like, this, and he's like, I use it at this at this world's to get down to this weight. I use it at that world. So, I was talking to Rob Wagner. He's like, man, this guy's super smart, man. So, oh. you know, and that was the original anabolic diet, which he didn't like cut back and say, oh, you can have a uh, carb up on Wednesdays and all that stuff. He was like, 50 grams are under, go crazy on the weekends. Unless you start to smooth out, then you stop it. And, you know, he was right. By Tuesday or Wednesday of the next week, you're back into decent amount of ketosis, and now you're burning, 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 depending on how long that. So I would be, my ex-wife would be in it on Tuesday or Wednesday. I would be more Monday because Saturday I just, you know, just did a little of it, a little of the carb up. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think he doesn't get enough credit it for that. Was, it was a, a livable, doable diet. Exactly. You can go to a cocktail party. There's going to be, you can have ranch dressing, celery and ranch. Yeah. You, can, you, know, yeah. you can have all that stuff. Yeah, or uh, the Swedish meatballs. All that stuff. You can eat all the Swedish meatballs. Yeah. Or all their shrimp. You know, I know everybody says a calorie is a calorie, but, man, there's no freaking oh, way. Your body, you know, you know, here's my, if my you're a hard. If you're a hard training right. weight trainer, some, I mean, you got to crave that protein, man. I mean, there's just something about it. And it's just like, great. And you know what? Fat to me has always been restorative. It helps me heal up my. Yes. Up it's anabolic, body. right? I don't know what it is, but to me, it's like, that's, that's what gets yes. me, you know? And if anybody allows me some starch, I want some mashed potatoes with gravy and butter. Thank you. You want to do it right if you're going to do it. <laughs> and, some right. pie, and some pie. <laughs> you know, you were talking about that insulin going up, and my wife yeah. Uh, yeah, that's is, a neuro, is a neuroscientist. And all yeah. this. So she, she was sitting around with these top-level scientists and researchers, and mm -hmm. they're talking about, oh, what, or what kind of diet are you doing? And so she says, well, let me ask you a question. If your insulin is never raised, can you get fat? And everybody said, no. Ooh, ooh. And she's like, well, isn't that the answer then? Don't That's raise it. your insulin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, it's sort of like. Uh, uh, and, and again, let's take it to the next level of the next depth. And it's like, OK, so doesn't that confine us to foods that do not spike insulin? There you go. Yes. Then what's the next level down? Drill down a little further. What are those foods? Well, basically, you have <clears throat> if it ain't protein and it ain't fat and it ain't fiber uh you're looking at undigested sugar and i think once you dial that in and start eating the foods that are not spiking insulin i think uh i think spreading out the calories is very important uh, i mean what do you guys recommend i do oh, I don't know. That, I mean, every I two to like three hours the intermittent, I, I like the intermittent fasting thing myself i don't wake up and eat breakfast god damn I, I i don't eat until uh 2 3 o'clock no i have and to again it no. depends on your goals man it depends on your goals uh, i want to live longer right so that's the right way to do it so you're detoxifying or you're not asking your body to break down more. You're not putting it in and putting it in and putting your body's like, man, I got to deal with this. Deal with uh, this. If, uh, if you get older, you should eat lesser. Right. <laughs> well, I agree with that. Now, I don't know about Jim because he's doing the the fasted cardio in the morning. It sounds like, but but for me, you know, I'm waking up out of a sleep, seven, eight hours, six hours, and I, you know, I crave that protein. My muscles crave that protein right away so i'll have a uh, a whey protein shake first thing in the morning yeah uh, and you know what and you know what that doesn't disturb your post sleep low glycogen state you still are primed to do fasted cardio you can take in pure protein as long as you put carb in there yeah you're right. still good to go. you could drink that damn shake and you know bang you're still in the in the glycogen yeah lowest point but but for me 
but for me because of my goals and uh, you know that's one of the things you have to look at like we're talking about what are your goals and kind of model your your eating after that but for me you know I'm always looking to at least uh, you know maintain my my strength and, and muscle size so I'm trying to eat you know a good amount of protein every two three hours uh, maybe for Marty that's not as big of a deal anymore I mean I think uh, you were you were doing all the same things that that uh, that, that I kind of was back then when you were powerlifting and all that you know eat a lot after you uh, you train and maybe oh, two I'm three not, hours a lot of protein I'm not, I'm not down on you young man I want to but, want to see you be healthy but for the let's talk about the average what, person what do you have like a prime rib every no 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 no, I do a lot of shakes. I do, uh, you know, eggs and, and lean proteins, fishes and, and stuff like that. But and do you cook, like like when you say eggs, do you cook these? Yeah, they're scrambled, or I'll throw them in the okay. microwave real quick. No, many, I listen. I how many get a shot? How many do you take down at a time? Oh, I'll have I'll have about six or eight at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's you good. Know. I no, like I that. if if you're hinting at eating the raw eggs, I learned no, long no, no, ago no, no, not to do no, that. No, 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 no. I, that that wouldn't occur to me. That's that's a gourmet's uh, nightmare. Yeah, but, <laughs> but for the average person, even if you're not adhering to the strictest of diets and get your maybe, protein in every day, no matter what. Maybe, but right, but maybe you maybe you're maybe you're, you're, training, maybe maybe you're training, training, or maybe you're not. What wouldn't it just makes sense to try to spread out the calories more rather than sit down and and go to, you know just eat a ton I, of, I don't, at the, once and there's then no, there's no research that shows that six meals is better than three that's the thing um the problem is if you're a 290 pound guy getting that protein in three meals you got to eat a lot right but if and there's no thing, research showing that six meals are worse than three you know what i'm saying no no i i agree you, i think, you, I think yeah i know but i'm just saying jp you're, you're fine to keep doing what you're doing it's working yeah. for you keep doing it yeah but but I, what about if you're I, trying I, to the lean problem, out the, there's a, there is a i think an issue with that is if if you're a guy and you're not going to be in this situation anytime soon hopefully but who has to do things where you don't have food available all the time. So if, you, if you're in a situation where you always have to eat every two hours, your blood sugar is screwed if you, for some reason, have to go six or four, you know, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm so freaking hungry, where if well, you're somebody... He, he, <laughs> might, he might have the, the, the portable supplementation. I mean, you know, like a, a Perillo bar, you can get a, I think are the most peril potent Perillo bars, 250 calories. So you eat two of those, you've eaten like, I don't know, 500 calories and 64 grams of protein and, you know. AP, why can't you get Perillo to grams sponsor this? We all use his products. Why can't yeah, I? What? Uh, all the time. Let's go. Yeah. Do what now? Uh, why can't you get Perillo to sponsor this podcast? We all use his <laughs> We all use his products, and they're fantastic. I've uh, because John won't return our calls. Oh. No, he's uh, he's committed to coming on. He just has to load Skype onto his. Yeah, uh, computer. we've been asking him for uh, nine months. Uh, next but, next week, he keeps saying next week. But spreading right, out the right, calories. Right. One quick question about this: spreading out the calories. Would it be more important to someone who's trying to lose weight rather than versus building muscle? You can do it both ways. You can do it both ways. So if you're trying to build muscles, obviously you're sure. you're more frequent, but the calorie content, the protein content, and if you're going high carb, the carb content has to be bigger at each meal. Yeah. You're trying to get big. If you're trying to lose weight, you're going to decrease the carbs, maybe up the fats a little bit, yep. um, and you could still do the frequent meals. You know, just that. You know, when you're dieting, do I want a half a burger every two hours? No, I so want. It's 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 like again when we talk about like. Uh, we talk about some individuals are carb centric, yeah. some individuals are fat centric. I right. think we can also talk about some people are high frequency eaters and some people are low frequency eaters. I'm a low frequency eater. You're a high yeah. frequency eater. I don't think one trumps the other. No, I don't either. I, I, I guess. Think, I, I, mean, I guess my question is the you more got, you've got so many success stories. Yeah, of guys who ate six times a day and got shredded. 
And you have a lot of success stories that are guys that are using the intermittent fasting approach and not eating a lot of food and are doing great too. And I think that it's just, you know, there's a lot of roads. Right. And you have to look at the constants. What's the constant? The constant is the protein. (laughs) And and how old you are. Do you, what's the goal or, you know, I mean, so many many variables. What's the similarities? Yeah. Is there actual science that you guys know of behind, uh, eating more meals a day speeds up your metabolism? Yeah. Now the, in theory, that's what I've always heard. Yeah. In theory, it's, it depends on the content. And you put a little kindling on the fire, then you then it starts to die mm. out. You put, right. but you know it's it's not substantiated. However, the whole substantiation thing is can be a bunch of bullshit because I'll give you a great example. Rich Sulky's in a nutrition class at University of Maryland, and his teacher says you only need this is just an example. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was something like, you know, half your half your pound half your grams of protein and body weight. So if Rich, you know, is two hundred at a hundred grams a day. And you need your carbs four or five times. And Rich raises his hand and says, that's not enough protein. And the teacher says, no, according to this research, and da, 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 da. And Rich is like, I know. If I did that, I'd be smaller right away. You're talking about building muscle. I know how to build muscle. So, And bodybuilders have, whether you like them or not, bodybuilders have always been on the cutting edge because oh, yeah. it shows right away in their physique, right away. And they are, they are the world's greatest dieters. No question. No question. So... There, even if there's not studies, doesn't mean it doesn't work. And you can, you know, there's bias in all these studies too. But that's just an example of sometimes the studies aren't caught up with what the real world, the people who do this for a living, are are currently doing. You know, protein intake. By the way, just since you're on the subject, would you guys agree that it's usually, you know, a, a pound to a pound and or a gram to a ground and a half per pound of body weight yes. for building muscle? Yes. Gram, gram and a half is a lot, I think. I mean, if you're a serious athlete type dude, yeah, I think a gram and a half is good. I think if you're a, a kind of a just a hard training normal person, a gram a day is pretty damn good. That's a lot, you know. You gotta yeah. you gotta stay at it. Yeah, that's that's where the shakes. You know, you have somebody's a busy oh, yeah, lifestyle. Just two shakes, hundred grams. Yeah, you gotta have a shake. So I, I, I couldn't I couldn't fathom sitting around and eating all that, you know. You know how much time that would take just to eat that? And the preparation. I got oh, stuff yeah, to yeah, 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 right. I mean, you know, we're going to, uh, you're going to do uh, a, a dozen egg omelet? Oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I just drink it? A lot easier. You know, a lot of this uh, information that we talked about today, and, and uh, Marty, you just mentioned the world world's greatest dieters are bodybuilders. Yep. I mean, you Absolutely. you wrote an article on that um, that's on our website. If you go to articles, go to ironcompany.com, go to articles at the top, click on that, and search for world's greatest dieters. Um, I put a really cool picture in there of Frank Zane doing the vacuum. <laughs> Frank. And I mean, he's just ain't, shredded. Ain't too many dudes doing the vacuum today. No. <laughs> the, the, nope. I, think, I think that went out in like, I don't know, 1991 or something. Right. And there's, right. yeah, there's, there's the Dor- a, Dorian or Nasterell somebody or, uh, you know, those guys weren't doing a lot of vacuums. No. no. There was, you know, I think it was Dorian that was, uh, on Joe Rogan, or was it Joe Rogan? I, I think yeah, it was, was on Rogan. I think it was Joe Rogan that, uh, or I mean uh, Dorian that that said, uh, you know, at at the at, during his career or whatever, he uh, actually got um, X-rayed to check the size of his organs to see if they had grown or were, you know, bigger than normal. And he said, no, everything was normal. Yeah, I mean, you think about the amount of food, man. I mean, uh, I don't know. Well, but so, but these anyway, these guys I'd rather know. look like Dorian and not do a vacuum than be able to do a vacuum and look like Frank Zane. Nothing against Frank Zane, but if yeah. you want to look like a bodybuilder, I mean, Dorian Yates to me is is the epitome of what I would want to look like, man. Here, here's the point I made, and I don't mean to be rude, but I thought Kim Chavesky could have beat Dorian Yates, and I mean, could have beat uh, Frank Zane. At his peak. In 77? 
Yeah. Oh, she had she was packing more muscle than in him. She was like uh I mean she would have crushed him. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I mean she was she was that she was just as ripped as him. She was bigger than him. Yeah, she was something. Well he was uh, that was bad judging. That was the, that was the days then when uh Chris Dickerson Beat Bertel Fox. Eighty-two Olympia. Eighty-two. Are you kidding me? It's like well, that was a makeup for Arnold Franco for you. Whatever. Me. I mean, that was come a makeup. on. And, and, you know, was one of those, uh, when giving like, Franco the Olympia over Tom Platts. Are you kidding me? And over Padilla and over Calendar and. Uh, oh, I'm still mad about that. I know. But I made more money on that log. <laughs> you know. You know, I saw Platts at uh, in Wheaton, man. I went to a cellar oh. with Platts at Crossham Gold. There was that little elementary school. <clears throat> and he came and did a seminar. I talked to him. It was only like 12 of us, 15 of us in there. He was still competing. Um, and he posed and everything. And this is, I think I might, I might have said this story. but So he tore his bicep doing flies, you know. And he, that's, you know, so in 82, he, he uh, competed but finished six. 83, he took it off because surgery and all. So... He goes, but you know, you know how bodybuilders are. He goes, he's flexing as he's doing a double bicep. And he says, but you can't really tell which bicep it is, right? And we're like, oh, no, it looks great. And this guy goes, no, nah, no, nah, you could tell. <laughs> now you could tell. You tore that one, right? It's a lot smaller. Oh, look, it's so misshapen, too. <laughs> and Platt's face just fell, man. It was just like... <laughs> then he flexed his legs and we all like fell on the floor. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Remember, uh, re remember. well, there's a lot of guys through history, bodybuilding and football and all that, that, that have torn biceps. But uh, I remember seeing Lyle Alzado um, down at uh, Gold's Gym Venice. We were doing a shoot down there with down there with uh, some guys, and I saw Lyle Alzado. He, all, he had that torn bicep. And some yeah. guys don't get it fixed and reattached, and it's like way up high, and you can really tell. Um, but, um, in fact, I was just watching a YouTube video, guys doing deadlifts and tearing their biceps as they're deadlifting and you can just see it roll up. Ugh. Yeah. Do the hook grip. You won't tear it. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. We, we, could, we could go on with this one all day long. This is, uh, some interesting stuff. And like I said, a lot, uh, some of this stuff is on our site, go to ironcompany.com. Go to articles at the top of the site, click on that, and go to Raw with Marty Gallagher. And he's got a really good article in there, The World's Greatest Dieters, uh, where he goes on to talk about how, how bodybuilders are just so dialed in on their on their nutrition. It's a, it's a great article. Um, and you could check out Marty's weekly column and now podcast, Raw with Marty Gallagher. At Iron Company, we usually have an article, a new one every week, and then Jim Steele contributes once a month. So usually uh, mid-month we'll post his. So look for uh, he's got his own section in there as well, Jim Steele. Um, and then uh, Marty's also available for online training and seminars, and I think Jim is too. Sure. Um, you got to be dedicated though. You got to be ready to work. <laughs> and you, you can reach those guys by, uh, you can go to our our, uh, our athletes page at Iron Company. And you'll see Marty there. He's got his, um, he's got his uh, email. And for Jim, you can just email our, our, uh, our email address on our customer service or contact us page. And then um, for all your fitness equipment and gym flooring needs, please check us out. We've... Uh, Got some great deals on rubber hex dumbbells, urethane dumbbells, powder coated kettlebells. We've got a great 5150 Olympic bar and a whole bunch more. So check all that out at ironcompany.com. And, uh, and finally, like I said, Jim Steele's got some great articles coming our way. He's got about three or four of them up there. He's contributing once a month. So check those out. You can also check out his website bassbarbell.com he's got a lot of uh, training motivation programs on there you can check out as well and uh, I think that's it that's it that's a another good one. great one all right guys thanks talk guys to talk to you next All week right. bye bye